I'm very pleased to introduce our speaker today. It's Greg Philipson from Austin, Texas. Greg and his wife, Michelle, have assembled their collection in an archive that spans the Holocaust, anti-Semitism, World War II propaganda, genocide, and much more. The uh, Philipsons uh, travel widely and give presentations to groups all over the country and contribute uh, the loan of items from their collections to what become major museum installations. Please help me welcome Greg Philipson, and he will tell us about stories uh, uh, are behind Drawn to Action, the artistic and philatelic works of Arthur Schick. Take it away, Greg. All right, thank you, Hal, and nice to meet everybody here. I know there's some people I have uh, I know from uh, different clubs that I'm involved in. Uh, today, we wanted to talk about Arthur Schick, and uh, although it's pronounced like the razor, you can see it's a Polish name. Um, he was he's a famous, famous Polish Jewish artist um, that dates back um, his artwork. The earliest items that we have start around the beginning of the First World War. So I think it's appropriate to just give you an idea of what we do. Hal mentioned about um, exhibiting and loaning things, and sometimes we just have uh, uh, exhibits of just one of our many collections. And here you see a Texas State University. Uh, down south of Austin, you can see this was one of the uh, uh, Arthur Schick exhibits that we did. And we've done these uh, all across. Uh, as a matter of fact, we had it. I know there's some people from Toronto here and uh, or Canadian, I should say. We up at McGill University, uh, some of the Arthur Schick pieces that you'll see today uh, have even been on exhibit up there. But I always think that it's uh, most important to talk about the individual so you get a, a little bit of an idea of who this man was. And again, you please bear with me. Um, this is not purely a postcard uh, discussion today. Um, it's, it's all about Arthur Schick. And fortunately, there is a great deal of postcard content here. But it's not, um, I know some of the times you have traditional all postcard talk. So bear with me on that. Arthur Schick was born in Łódź, Poland, which is right outside of Warsaw. And uh, he died at a young age, 1957. He found his way to New Canaan, Connecticut. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. But one of the reasons I collect Arthur Schick is because, you know, being uh, my, my wife and I being a Jewish family, um, an American family, and my wife's father was a Holocaust survivor, we identify with Arthur Schick because not only was he a Polish patriot, an American patriot, but also a Jewish patriot. Finely educated, highly educated uh, in his artistic capabilities uh, in Paris and in Krakow, Poland. He's known mostly for his uh, religious and political cartoons and, uh, and drawings and uh, uh, manuscripts and book illustrations. And we're gonna see a lot of this today. Most of the things he did were watercolor or gouache paintings. Um, and uh, we, I think we still have probably close to 50 original drawings of his. Uh, and again, you'll see some of those in the presentation. Uh, some of his notable works are the Statutes of Calis, and that's a, uh, a whole series he did. The statutes were very, very important um, in the early days of Poland because it gave Jewish people full rights as citizens and to be landowners. And obviously things deteriorated after that, but he did in 1932 a whole series on that. Uh, we'll see some of that today as well. Washington and his times were a series of 20 postcards. Uh, we're going to see those, uh, the glorious days of the Polish revolution, and so on and so on. But you'll see the things that I mentioned there uh, throughout the presentation. He was awarded, he did some of the most magnificent works I've ever seen for any artist that we collect, and especially um, from propaganda type artists. He was the most, uh, probably the preeminent artist during World War II of anti-Nazi, anti-Japanese, anti-access um, uh, cartoons. But what's really remarkable was the dramatic change that you'll see from his works in Paris in the 1920s 
um, to when he got into the World War II stuff. Um, uh, and and, and we'll, as I said, we'll talk about that. One of the first and most famous things that he's noted for um, when you talk about Arthur Schick is, is a book called the Haggadah. And this was done in England in 1940. There were only 240 of these produced, 120 each time. Huge manuscript, um, you know, profusely illustrated uh, volumes of the prayer book, in essence, that we use as Jewish people for the holiday of Passover. It's the Passover Haggadah. And you can see here, they were all sold, pre-sold, and inscribed by both Arthur Schick and a guy named Roth, who was the uh, the printer. These are um, uh, ultra rare. Uh, there's one at the University of Texas, one of the big synagogues that we'll talk about in a second in Cleveland. Uh, there was a famous Jewish rabbi there named Abba Hillel Silver. One was inscribed to him uh, and so on. He knew Arthur Schick very well. So this is the type of work. And if you notice this, this is considered like a medieval manuscript. Uh, the detail, the calligraphy, it's, it's sensational work. And uh, uh, so here in 1940, he, thank goodness, well, actually in 1939, September 1st, when the Nazis and the Germans invaded Poland, um, he was not there. He was a citizen of Poland. And uh, his mother, unfortunately, was caught up in the uh, ghetto where he lived in, in Łódź, Poland, and she perished. Um, I'm not sure if she was sent to a concentration camp or died of disease or hunger. But uh, fortunately for him, he and his family were in the his immediate family were in London. And uh, in uh, 1940, July 13, he ended up in Halifax, Canada, and spent some time there doing um, uh, an exhibit, I believe. I can't remember. I'm sorry if it was in Montreal or in Toronto. But this says, if you can't read that, it says Arthur Schick, renowned Polish artist, whom Hitler regards as one of Germany's most dangerous enemies, arrived in Canada yesterday to begin a lecture tour uh, on the Dominion and the United States, in the Dominion and the United States. He is shown above with his daughter, Alexandra Wright, and his wife. His son, George, this is important to note, is with General de Gaulle in London, uh, fighting with the uh, free. Uh, Polish army that was assembled and really uh, either under the French or British, uh, depending on what day it was. And I want to show you this. So when I went to Cleveland, this is a picture I actually took. You'll notice that Arthur Schick chose Jewish men and women as fighting and strong people that, you know, people said the Jews didn't fight these old anti-Jewish uh, kind of tropes, if you will. And this is outside in the temple in Cleveland. This is a Jewish uh, war memorial, and you can just see the top of it below. It has the names of all the Jewish veterans that were uh, killed during World War II that uh, were from Cleveland. And it's really incredible artwork. This is stained glass done by Arthur Schick of Gideon Samson and Judah Maccabee, three obviously very, very famous uh, Jewish warriors. Incredible artwork. And inside the uh, not the main synagogue, but the chapel uh, where people worship, um, the uh, stained glass inside there, it's not Arthur Schick's work, but woven into the stained glass are the names of the veterans that were uh, killed during the war. Remarkable uh, tribute. And of course, I always like to find some connection to our personal family. And in this particular case, Capstan is a yearbook that was put out by the midshipman class of the U.S. Navy. Um, this one is from 1943, and uh, when it got published. And Capstan is that's a capstan, the thing in the Navy that a rope would tie to to uh, at, at dock. Um, Arthur Schick did this unbelievable cover of the excess powers in a like a shark submarine being hauled in by midshipmen at this class of, which happened to be held at Notre Dame University. And unbeknownst to me, I had this book for several years. That's the inside uh, end papers and also, and also at the end, the two page spread uh, was my cousin also from Utica, Ben Phillipson, who was a Naval officer in the reserves who was called up 
uh, during World War II. And that's his picture inside the book with this incredible Arthur Schick illustration, obviously done specifically for the capstan. And again, staying with kind of this military theme of Arthur Schick showing, you know, people trying to uh, get their independence and survive. This is a famous uh, painting of the Battle of Tel Hai and uh, uh, done by, uh, pardon me, done by Arthur Schick, but highlighting the guy in the green shirt in the center is Joseph Trumpledor, a famous Jewish Zionist hero um, who actually fought in the early 1900s for the uh, army of the Tsar in Tsarist Russia. And he was wounded and you can see he's missing one arm. He was wounded then. And in World War II, he ended up fighting with the British uh, from Palestine and started what was called the Zion Mule Corps uh, ambulance service for wounded um, uh, soldiers, people wounded in action. And this particular drawing is showing him where he was actually killed at the Battle of Tel Hai. And it's incredible artwork. And Arthur Schick is always noted for those beautiful borders around um, his paintings. And uh, you can see if, if in Hebrew, it's uh, if I'm not for me, then who will be sort of uh, quote, if you will. And these ended up on poster stamps put out by the uh, uh, Jewish National Fund. Um, that same image appeared on these uh, little things for fundraising. Uh, if you've not seen those before, there's a whole series of them. Um, this is an image from a newspaper of Arthur Schick in July of 1942. Uh, from uh, from Beckley, West Virginia, not too awful far from Pittsburgh, uh, unveiling his painting that's called the Modern Maccabees. And the Maccabees were the, uh, if you're familiar with the holiday of Hanukkah, uh, it's a celebration of the dedication of the second temple being retaken um, uh, from the Greeks and Syrians, if you will. So this is, uh, you know, a really nice picture of his uh, um, talking about Joseph Trumpledore and who died from his wounds, suffered in the fight against the Arab marauders in what was then, prior to Israel in 1948, uh, what was then Palestine. And here it shows up again if, on a Russian book I was able to acquire and a picture of Arthur Schick and from a uh, Hebrew magazine from Israel. Uh, these are modern books uh, and that image is still being shown today. Now, these are illustrations from two different books. The one, these were done in Paris in the 1920s. The one on the left is called The Well of Jacob. And here, at the, in roughly the same period, look at the two drastically different styles that he was able to do, both with the interesting borders. One, the one on the right from the Arabian Nights that he illustrated. Um, these are incredible, uh, colorful, detailed illustrations. Um, even the Arabic at the bottom, all hand done. And uh, so one is very mid medievalish and so on. And the other one is really Art Deco. Uh, you can see kind of a modern, uh, you know, Ottoman Empire guy, if you will, in the back with the red fez on, the posters on the wall, with the and, and obviously the attire of, of a woman from the 1920s um, in the restaurant. So this is just giving you an idea of the type of styles that he was capable of. Uh, at that time. Now, the Statutes of Khalees were really an important work because it celebrates something very, very positive uh, about uh, uh, the, the Poles and the Jews together. Very sadly, as you know, Poland had the uh, uh, largest Jewish population and, of course, had the largest number of Jews murdered during the Holocaust uh, after the, uh, well, not just by the Nazis, but there are many, many, far too many collaborators, including many Poles, uh, I'm sad to say. But in August, uh, uh, on 16 August of 1264, in the town of Kalis, Prince uh, Boleslav uh, the Pious issued a charter for the Jews living in Greater Poland, which under his rule, uh, it was an amazing piece of legislation. And really, I think that may be one of the reasons that the Polish the Jewish population in Poland became so significant. And it said the statute provided for penalties for desecration of a Jewish cemetery or a synagogue. It also contained provisions concerning blood libels directed against Jews. These were major, major milestones in the 1200s. I mean, in the late 1100s, Jews were expelled from England under um, 
uh, uh, under uh, King Edward the First, um, and you know were forced to wear pointed hats in Italy and Germany. I mean, it was really quite remarkable. So this is a a, a big to do, and we're going to show you one of the first postcards for today. This is a postcard, not only signed but dated by Arthur Schick from a whole collection he did uh, on the statutes. Um, in, in postcard format. And this, as you can see, these are from 1932, I believe that is. So this is a, a beautiful color illustration. I was able to acquire from Poland these large lithographs of every single, um, uh, every single illustration he did, which are numerous for the statutes, but also a hardcover book and a beautiful sleeve. And that's what the image on the left is. Now, this is also from our collection. Um, this is a signed color proof of one of the small illustrations. This, this whole frame is only like uh, four inches by four inches, but it's signed by Arthur Schick. It's a beautiful little piece. And I'm not sure what, the, what it really represents. I didn't understand the, Pol the Polish and I didn't get it translated. Um, but if this is uh, something to do with a, um, uh, one of the statutes where one of the people is, you know, they're reading it's a, like a, um, a, a judge, a, a judge uh, or some um, uh, legal official talking about the statutes in that particular image. You can see the Polish flag in the background. Now, I want to really focus on this. This is a lithograph, not a postcard, but I do have the entire series bound of these, um, of these 38 Polish drawings that he did. And I think that the really important feature about this, here's a guy in 1930s doing a patriotic series of American patriots for the American Revolution. And if you look very closely at this particular image, this is uh, in essence the opening battle of the American Revolution, right? Uh, Lexington and Concord. And this is the struggle on Concord Bridge. And look at the black gentleman with a little bit of blood near his face, laying wounded, fortunately only wounded, on the, uh, on the bridge. So his name is Prince Esterbrook, a slave to the Esterbrook family in Massachusetts at that time, when slavery was actually um, in, in effect up north. And he asked to fight with the militia, the Minutemen, if you will, not as a... Uh, as a um, uh, requirement to be a free man, which he did earn his freedom uh, only because the family was uh, basically proud of him. Uh, but he wounded was wounded at the opening battle. And Arthur Schick knew our history better than most people know our own American history, especially about the American Revolution. And again, he showed during World War II, African-American, uh, Jewish men and other people and women uh, as as powerful figures wanting freedom and fighting for that freedom. It's, it's really an important patriotic theme of Arthur Schick throughout everything. Now, this is one of, think of, uh, of Hal's favorites. This is a series in 1939 um, uh, entitled The Glorious Days of the Polish American Fraternity. And what I'm showing you are a series of these along with the envelope that they came in. And these are pretty standard size postcards and a little paper insert you see on the right covered by the envelope um, explaining what this, uh, what this was. So it's a set of 20 and um, it's the back of the cards have detailed descriptions, each of these 20 ship drawings. The cards were published uh, by uh, Naradowa and printed in Krakow, Poland in 1939. Uh, the insert details many of the uh, illustrious figures of Polish descent. And you can see in the very center there, that's Kashmir Pulaski. These people were generals and so on during the American Revolution. So in a lot of beautiful portrait of George Washington and many other important figures uh, from that period in our history. So this is what the, uh, envelope and what the insert looks like. Uh, not sure if anybody has these sets, but they're, uh, they're pretty pricey normally. And I thought this would be fun to, to see. These are original postcards from 1939. And someone has taken the time to, uh, one is from 1958, I believe. And you can see that's in Scranton, Pennsylvania. 
uh, with, a, uh, with a Jamestown, Virginia uh, postmark on there. But what's interesting, that's from the, uh, I think, 1943 series of Overrun Nations, that stamp, and that's obviously the flag of Poland. And I think believe there were 13 stamps that came out with all the countries that had been overrun and occupied by the excess powers. Um, the card on the right, I can never pronounce Thaddeus' uh, last name, so uh, excuse my not being able to speak proper Polish, but you see the gentleman, the tall slender gentleman in the middle holding the map. Uh, that's Thaddeus uh, Kozesko. And he was uh, actually was a general, but he uh, was the guy that designed the defense at several major battles, including uh, where our military academy is at West Point. And he's responsible for actually getting the defenses in place and winning those battles. He went back to Poland after the uh, American Revolution, but he was quite a uh, quite a significant officer in the uh, Continental Army, if you will. These are remarkable uh, illustrations, by the way. And here's another one, and uh, this one's postmark in Pittsburgh. Uh, you can see the, uh, 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 I, the, the American flag stamp. It's a first day of issue card. But this is Kashmir Pulaski, who was a Polish general and also an American uh, a general in the Continental Army. Uh, beautiful illustration uh, with George Washington here. Notice, please, that still at this time, he's doing those beautiful um, uh, border illustrations around the, um, the, the uh, images that he creates. Now, in 1976, unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, but I, I, I still have one, fortunately. I had a bunch of these, and I gave them away. Uh, it's the glorious days of the Polish-American fraternity. So for Americans, America's bicentennial, 20 paintings by Arthur Schick, the ones you just saw, were reproduced, and I'm showing this one because we just saw the Pulaski Washington card, um, were reproduced on these larger cards. It's not postcard format, and it talks about, it's, it, it's, it's um, illustrating the postcard, but then it has a whole bunch of stuff about the Polish-American fraternity and, of course, what was on the back of, of the card itself during that time. And these are much larger, but in, in, as you see this in a kind of um, uh, muted color, that's the way they were printed. It really wasn't what I would call um, really um, high quality printing. But these were done by this organization for the Bicentennial. Now, I want to talk here about Arthur Schick before we get into some of his really, really interesting postcards. This is from the Book of Esther. In Hebrew, it's called the Megillah Esther or the Scroll of Esther. And it's the account of our holiday called Purim. And Purim celebrates, it's not in, in the uh, Old Testament, but it celebrates um, the, 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 basically the salvation of the Jewish people in what could have been a much earlier Holocaust. And uh, this takes place in you know biblical days, and it's Queen Esther, her uncle, uh, Mordecai, King Ahasuerus, and a really bad guy named Haman or Haman and his brothers that were trying to get the king to annihilate all the Jewish people at this time. And what's very, and you'll see that, and it turns out that the Jewish people were saved, Queen Esther being Jewish herself and her uncle were able to do that. You see Haman in the very back there being hung. So now in 1950, he redoes his Megillah or scroll or book of Esther. And notice how his, it still has that medieval manuscript, um, uh, you know, border around it. But look at this radically changed image here. In Hebrew, in the very bottom center, that says Megillah Esther or the scroll of Esther. And that has, that's Arthur Schick on the, sitting in the chair, has put himself as a self-portrait into this particular picture and showing Haman now all the way in the forefront. No one else is there. And notice what's on Haman's clothing swastikas representing the Germans and the excess powers that annihilated six million Jewish people of which one and a half million were children 12 and under. A lot of in very important detail in here and I tried to give it all to you here. It says in Hebrew, he who saves his nation Israel from all their tormentors. And that script from the Megillah itself or the scroll of Esther. And they hanged Haman on the tree which he, Haman, prepared for Mordecai and the Jewish people. 
and the anger of the king was abated. And then at the bottom, it says, uh, um, you know, just uh, telling you what that's from. And here's a, just look at this. So this is from 1925 or 26 on the left. And this is 1950. So 25 years later, look at the dramatic change. Um, you see Arthur Schick with all his paints and uh, his brushes on the table. And if you notice, he's holding a cookie with a three-pointed cookie in his hand. And that's called a hamantaschen. And a hamantaschen is a, it's just a pastry filled usually with uh, poppy seeds or some fruit. And a hamantaschen basically represents Haman's, Haman's ear. And uh, it, I guess back in the day, a lot of times people had, uh, I guess we saw this with some of our troops in Vietnam, would cut off the uh, ears of uh, uh, deceased um, uh, enemies, if you will. So that's a, a very common cookie that's eaten uh, during uh, the holiday of Purim. Now, this is one of my prized postcards in this collection. This is original Arthur Schick artwork. I bought this on an auction from Paris, along with a number of other pieces from a, uh, a collector, uh, art dealer in Paris that nobody knew this stuff was even out there. Arthur Schick did this in 19, I can't, I forgot the exact date when this was mailed. I can't see it. It looks like maybe 19, I'm not sure. It's a World War I era because that's kind of a Polish army uniform. So I suspect it's around 1914, 1917, something in that area. Um, however, what's really important is this was a blank postcard that he, this is original artwork of himself throwing up at the train station in Paris. And in the message, he talks about being sick with like a dysentery type of thing um, as he was ready to uh, board the train. Actually mailed, it went to somebody in Paris and that's his handwriting, uh, remarkable. And that's a very early Arthur Schick um, uh, signature on the bottom right there. So this is, I actually have this frame uh, with glass on both sides because it's considered, you know, an original piece of art by him. Um, these are two pieces. The one on the right is not a postcard, but that is, I bought this uh, from a guy. Um, this showed up on a history detectives TV show here in the States. And I ended up getting these two pieces. Well, one's very similar to this from 1915. This is Arthur Schick's illustration of World War I era. You can see it's kind of a, almost a crude, uh, uh, of getting into more cartoony uh, if, of a World War I Polish soldier. And uh, obviously he's in the music corps, you can tell by his shoulder pads and the, um, and, and the drum, obviously. And I show you this to make a little bit of a comparison to this ultra rare postcard, um, not as it just seldom seen, I've never seen another one of these. And that's an Arthur Schick illustration. Um, and it's the cancellation on here is from Radom Poland, which was part of the Austrian Polish Empire probably at one time. But Radom, R A D O M, you can see that was a, a one of the very uh, major uh, holding areas or ghettos for Jewish people in the war to follow this particular war. This is obviously World War I. You can see it's dated at the bottom there, 1915, uh, second year of World War I. And that cancellation there is KUK. That is the Austrian Hungary Army, um, what is called Feldpost or military mail. So it didn't require, you can see over the uh, postmark, it says Feldpost. You, it, it, and that's true today too. It was in World War II and other conflicts in America. If you're active duty military, you do not have to use postage. You can write free um, in, in, in the days, these days uh, in Germany, Austria, Hungary, they wrote Feldpost. So anyway, it's a very uh, unusual card actually posted and with an unbelievable military, you know, in battle, uh, uh, Polish or possibly Ottoman Empire, um, not Ottoman, I'm sorry, Austria-Hungary Empire uh, soldiers fighting there. This is another card. I've never seen anything like this one as well. I'm not saying they don't exist. I, in my, my many years of collecting Arthur Schick, I've never seen this. It was sent to uh, France, I believe from Warsaw and uh, another Arthur Schick illustration uh, stamps uh, on both the front and the reverse of the card dated 1922. And uh, 
um, you know, it says Warsaw underneath there. That's the, the Polish version of Warsaw and uh, sent to someone in France. Uh, unbelievably beautiful illustration. Uh, these are definitely Polish soldiers. You can always tell by those uniforms and those particular caps. These, unfortunately, are not in my collection. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm, these, I can't remember if I saw these on an auction or just somewhere from someone's collection, so I borrowed these. These are stamps that were never uh, either accepted by the Polish post office or for some fundraiser. I've never seen an image of these other than this. Um, obviously, two different values, looks like the same image. And these were done in the town that Arthur Schick is from. You can see L-O-D-Z, Woods, or however various people pronounce that. So this just gives you an idea. And it's important because he did get into the philatelic area uh, much later um, than this. This is obviously very early. This is World War I style uniforms. Here is a beautiful postcard from the statutes. Um, again, uh, this one was actually mailed um, to uh, what today is uh, in the Ukraine, but it's mailed from Zurich um, to Poland. But at that time, it was uh, uh, Lvov. And I guess that's uh, in the Ukraine today that we're calling, um, uh, I, forget, I can't remember the name that the Russians have given it now. But nonetheless, it's a beautiful illustrated um, Arthur Schick postcard. Very, very rare postmark from Zurich. Um, uh, and, and it looks like it's from 1932. So it's just, you know, starting to get 1933 begins the Holocaust era, 33 to 45. So it's a beautiful registered uh, sticker on there and so on. Uh, it's got a couple, uh, you know, the Lvov um, uh, uh, receiving cancel at the bottom if you're into the philatelic end of it. And of course, the Zurich postmarks uh, at the top. Beautiful. Here's another one. Now, I'm sorry for this. The stamp was missing when I bought this, uh, but nonetheless, it's a beautiful um, biblical scene uh, of Arthur Schick's uh, from a different series of postcard. That's uh, um, uh, Moses and the Pharaoh and, you know, putting the baby in the basket era, right? You can see that on the bottom left of the card. Um, so what you're looking at here, that is a Moscow cancel from 1934. Uh, it's to me, these are, you can find some of the cards like this, but finding them mailed is really quite a chore. So you're looking at some things that you probably won't see too often, uh, especially with these types of uh, uh, rare postmarks on them. This is a series of cards of Polish battles, um, religious type material, and I have the whole series. I'm just showing you a few here, much like this statute card that I showed earlier. All, this is all from that same series, all signed and dated by Arthur Schick. Again, pretty uh, seldom seen sort of material if you're into postcard collecting. Uh, having the signature of the artist, especially early dates like this, is, is pretty hard. Now, I really love this. These are two different cards with the same front, so I'm only showing the front ones. It's obviously uh, the Don Quixote uh, Arthur Schick's illustration. I think that artwork is so comical and colorful and just so alive. And this particular one was uh, inscribed and signed and dated 1928 in Paris. So the one I'm showing, um, the back of the, um, the top one on the right is the back of the inscribed one. That was not mailed. The other one, which is the same image, was actually mailed in Paris. And um, I want you to pay special attention, if you don't mind, look at the round seal in the upper left corner of those cards. That is Arthur Schick's own design that's like his, um, his label or his seal printed on there. That's him sitting at his desk, much like you saw the one in the uh, Megillah Esther, the Book of Esther. That's him sitting at his desk painting and drawing. So uh, this is a beautiful card sent from Paris, local mail to Paris, but um, really, really unusual. Not one postmarked and one uh, inscribed and signed by Schick himself. Uh, I, you can discuss this later, but I, it's one of my favorite illustrations that he did. Now, these, uh, uh, we're going to show this one and one other from this series. This is from 1950. And I decided that it would be nice to, if you understood what this was, because 
at this time, this is right after World War I, which ended in 1918, uh, Europe was pretty well devastated. And what this is, this is, it's called on the, uh, on the top right there, it's the Resurrectionists of Poland. And these are Germans um, taking Polish religious leaders and so on and kind of confining them, if you will. It's, it's an anti-German um, kind of like occupation or previous occupation uh, sort of thing. And what he's reading where it says AKT 5 slash 11, um, I think AKT means act and that's a German thing. Um, it, I think what it, he's reading is, is a uh, edict uh, 5 of 11, like the number 5 of 11. So um, it, it's a rather, it's a political postcard, but notice how primitive, um, not only the dog, but the, um, you know, all the characters are almost like stick figure sort of things. And this was his early works for some of these um, uh, political things. And he was in the Polish army, by the way, in World War I, in their special services in the propaganda department. So this one, uh, the Polish, um, it translates to a trap for people. And this is trying to get Poles, Jew and Gentile. There's, uh, you know, this is early, right? This is 1919 now. Um, this is prior to the Holocaust by many years. Um, this is offering 5,000 Polish Zlotys or uh, Deutschmarks, whatever. I'm, I don't know the currency there. Offering people to come to work in the coal mines in Germany. They didn't have enough people to work in the coal mines. So they were offering a lot of money. It's a propaganda thing showing because people knew that basically going to work in a coal mine in Germany at this time was basically a death sentence. Uh, this lack of safety and, uh, and, and, and the working hours and so on. So again, it's a political uh, postcard for Poles not to go to work uh, for the Germans in their coal mines. In 1939, for an organization, uh, these are printed in, uh, I think they were printed in the UK, but it's for aid, in aid of the Polish Relief Fund. So 1939 in September, you know, the Nazis and, uh, uh, had invaded, the Soviets had invaded a few weeks later from the east and were divvying up Poland and their non-aggression pact between each other. Uh, the, 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 the Stalin and Hitler, if you will. And these cards, there's a whole series of these. I'm actually not certain I have the entire series. I have a number of them. Some are black and white and some are in color, but these are all Polish soldiers, officers enlisted and so on. Um, and, uh, you know, really, I mean, pretty serious artwork here, very carefully done uniforms, hats, and uh, and, and so on. And always notice the boots. He's really big on boots in his artwork. Here's a couple more from this series. And this one, you know, so it's 1939. This is obviously post uh, September 1st, because here's a Nazi soldier rounding up Jewish um, uh, Polish citizens, um, as you can tell by the beards and caps and their attire, if you will, uh, both religious and, you know, non-religious Jewish people, depending on, um, you know, how their clothing and what have you. Um, really a serious card. You're starting to see now the swastikas and those types of things appear. Down below is a, a, a Polish officer. And by the way, I can't recall the number, but there were thousands and thousands of Polish Jewish officers in the Polish army at that time. Uh, many were murdered, as, as many of you may know, uh, by the Soviets, not just by the uh, Nazis. And I'm talking about soldiers, not, not just the civilians. Um, this is, uh, I think, one of Hal Ottaway's favorites. This is an unbelievable set of postcards, oversized, high gloss coating um, that Arthur Schick did. They were Esky cards uh, for Esquire magazine in 1942, I believe. This is the complete set. These are actually framed because they've been on exhibit many times. That's the envelope that they came in and they sold for 25 cents. And these are really true anti-Nazi. This, this is really hardcore Arthur Schick. And we'll see some of this stuff a little uh, up close. What I wanted to show you are on the back side, these were mailed. And again, you can see these are um, uh, from different camps. You know, armies of uh, forts were then called camps, training camps. 
1943, both of these. And again, free franked, or, you know, as they used on the, uh, the KUK card, it was uh, uh, Feld Post. But these are active military people at their, de you know, base, and they're sending these cards to people. Uh, again, very difficult to find these cards. You can find the cards, but very difficult to find these that were postally, um, postally used. And these are obviously sent from uh, different military installations. This is one of my favorites. And you have to look at the image in the card here. It's called Il Duce, which is Mussolini, the fascist leader of Italy. And he was doing his fascist stuff long before Hitler. He was in uh, probably around 1934 or so, give or take, uh, had invaded Italy, uh, Italy, Ethiopia, and was a murderous slaughter of, you know, basically defense, defenseless Ethiopians um, trying to take over, you know, the whole North African area and so on. But notice in this, the, the cartoonish thing, that's Hermann Goering, the head of the Luftwaffe, the number two guy in Nazi, in Nazidom. Uh, that's Tojo on the far right there, a skeleton, which was very always uh, embedded into Arthur Schick's artwork. But look at Mussolini. Everybody's got a swastika, so they're all falling under the Nazi empire. But look at the lead that Goering has in his hand. It's a chain around Mussolini's neck. So all of these little uh, nuances are and very interesting um, little depictions in his artwork of, in other words, Mussolini or Il Duce being a lackey uh, to the Nazi regime. Now, this card was sent by a U.S. sailor. It's a U.S. Navy postmark, uh, January 28, 1944, free franked, really nice, out of Corpus Christi, Texas, the U.S. Navy, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, training center there. And I don't know if you'll really be able to see it, but out of all the text, if you look at the, the writing down the very far left side, he says, what of you do you think of the cartoon? And that's why people bought this. People love these anti-Nazi, detailed, colorful, illustrated cartoons. And this is my favorite one of the many that I have that were mailed. Uh, Hal, I added this after our conversation recently. I forgot that I had this. This is a from Esquire, and Esquire magazine was a full page, uh, pardon me, a um, oversized magazine. They were very large pages. And those cartoons, by the way, oh, well, so some other ones, um, appeared in, in the Esquire magazine as one of these full pages, all six of the postcards. Those are basic reproductions of actual uh, pages in the magazine. This particular page, is postcards with esk appeal, the new esky cards. And I don't know if you can really see it on Zoom, but if you go down the list, one, two, three, four, then the fifth one is six different shicks, it says. And then in the display above the um, um, pinup girl, if you will, those were the you know sexy kind of esky cards that soldiers would pin up and so on. Um, you can see one of the Arthur Schick cards um, on that little display panel there that uh, however you would buy those in the store. So I tried to really cover this postcard thing as much as possible. Here it is blown up. I forgot I put this one in there. Um, I know the image isn't good, but I had to blow it up off of that uh, large page. So you can see the one over there. And that, by the way, is uh, Tojo sneaking up on a cowboy, which represents America, and stabbing him in the back, which represents obviously the sneak attack by the Japanese on our troops, our naval troops at uh, Pearl Harbor. Um, these two illustrations appeared also in Esquire magazine in 1942. Very interesting. These are high gloss uh, pages in the magazine, not here. These are reproduced on cards, not postcards, I'm sorry to say, but first day of issue cards for these particular stamps. Um, that's MacArthur in Australia. And obviously, George Washington, a fame that this is Arthur Schick's rendition of George Washington crossing the Delaware during the American Revolution. Um, the paper in Esquire magazine was really high quality. And these two illustrations were back to back on the same page in the particular issue um, that uh, they appeared in. Um, although this is not a postcard, this is Answer magazine. And this is uh, Ernest Bevan, the uh, Foreign Secretary or Secretary of Labor in the UK, 
And Alan Mann, if you want to uh, correct me on that, I don't know, I forgot his official title, but this is post-World War II. You can see it's dated 1946. That's an uh, indication. Uh, Bevan was a pretty much an anti-Semite, uh, along with uh, very many people, unfortunately, in the American State Department, uh, including John Foster Dulles uh, that you see in the cartoon on the right. So what you're looking at is the original Answer magazine that's in our collection, ultra rare, uh, very seldom seen from 1946. Um, that is, I don't own that, the top right one, but that's from the Sunday Compass newspaper. It was a New York newspaper. That's where that uh, um, uh, illustration, the political cartoon ran called Austerity. And it's really a you know pro-Arab, uh, everybody wanting the oil sort of, uh, uh, that was more important than uh, civil rights, I guess, for people. And what's really wonderful is the bottom right one is the original artwork that is hanging in our family room downstairs. Um, and it's called Dignified Schnorrers. And uh, Schnorr is not a term of endearment in Yiddish, if you will. And that's what uh, Arthur Schick labeled that one. It was renamed Austerity for the newspaper, but um, that's uh, Ernest Bevan. And so what I wanted to show you, and the reason I put that in there is because here is that illustration on a postcard. It's not dated, I'm sorry to say. I don't know what happened to the postmark there. Um, the stamp is there. But this is, again, the only one of these I have ever seen. And it's the Honorable Ernest Bevan. And the back of the card, you can say a limited number of these postcards are available at the following prices. I wish I had paid a, a dollar for 25, but uh, this went for quite a bit. And it was done under the auspice of the American League for a Free Palestine. So in the 1940s, after World War um, uh, the postcard is dated, I think that's 1946, as you saw, and the, the, that's the illustration from the cover of the 1946 illustration we just showed. Um, this postcard uh, was designed to raise money, and this was a Zionist organization um, to get the British basically to reestablish what today is the modern state of Israel, which effectively just had its... Um, uh, uh, 75th anniversary, uh, May 14th, um, very important, May 14th of 1948. So what you're seeing in the top there is for a free Palestine, that's the uh, American League. And that is an illustration from uh, Arthur Schick's Haggadah, his modern Haggadah, if you will, called, uh, the, it, it's, it's, it, it says the wise son, there's four sons. And he uses the wise son illustration has changed it from like a biblical illustration to a Jewish man in a helmet who's going to be a soldier and defending himself. And it's really cute. I got to tell you this story. If anybody speaks Yiddish or Hebrew here, you'll kind of like this. That underneath him in Hebrew, it says Chacham. And Chacham means wise. In this case, it means a wise son. But in, in, in Yiddish, it also could mean like a wise guy. And I can't tell you how often my grandmother, the Philipson grandmother, called me a chukum for being a wise ass kid. It's absolutely hilarious. So that is my favorite Arthur Schick stamp that he did, only because of my personal connection to the word chukum. Now we can go back here to Joseph Trumpledore and other famous artists, including Arthur Schick, did these little poster stamps, if you will, to raise money for, and you can see on the top, it says Karen Kiemet Le Yisrael. And it's basically the Jewish National Fund. Jewish people were actually buying land back to create the state of Israel from the Turks under the Ottoman Empire. And uh, these were done, these are from Brazil, if you can imagine. And the top right stamp, the cobbler sitting at the table is Arthur Schick's illustration. And uh, as well as obviously Joseph Trumpledore. So on this little, this is an exploded booklet of the stamps uh, or poster stamps, Cinderella's, uh, whatever you like to call these labels. Um, and these are other famous uh, Jewish artists, Lillian and, and, and others in these. This is a, um, again, I think there's, a, I've seen a couple of these float around, but a pretty hard to find set of, um, of the stamps. And here's the rest of the series. So there was uh, four, four pages of 
um, well, <laughs> three pages of four, one page of three with a blank. And of course, the Joseph Trumpledore um, was a uh, full size, uh, the size of, uh, of four. It was over, oversized. And uh, it represents uh, a number of things uh, from Brazil, 1944. And it uh, talks about the Warsaw Ghetto Revolt and, and things like that. So during the war. And again, the different artists, uh, Budko, Bezel, and so on. Um, here, here's a, uh, again, I have one that's uh, without the covers on it. You can see the whole set right there. And what I wanted to show you in 1948, um, this is a, 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 a mailed envelope uh, registered from Haifa, Israel. This is now in Israel's earliest modern Israel, if you will, uh, earliest times. The British destroyed a lot of the postage for the new Is, uh, Israel post office and so on when they left, like they left many countries pretty pissed off. Um, this one, which I have a number of them, has the Arthur Schick uh, J Jewish National Fund or Karen Kiemet label you see on the bottom right there. And it's beautiful. And the, the cancellation says Doar, those three letters at the top. And notice in violet on all three, well, very prominent on the map of uh, Israel, uh, and on the other two stamps, it's uh, just a little bit um, um, uh, dulled or muted, if you will. They overprinted the stamps with the word Do'ar that meant post, and that turned these poster labels or charity labels or you know stamps that were designed to raise money into the actual postage stamps. So those were official from the Israel Post because postage, what the real other stamps that they had created were not uh, uh, in the, uh, yet available. I wanted to show you on a lot of these different things, different types of images. This is a, a Hadassah magazine. Hadassah is a worldwide Jewish women's service organization known uh, predominantly for uh, the hospitals uh, in Israel and other places. You've probably heard of Hadassah Hospital in New York or may have. Um, and this is an Arthur Schick cover on that. Um, it's the only one of these I've seen from November of 1944. And here you see a young mother with her son uh, huddled with a skull and barbed wire down below. And of course, the young boy, uh, you know, religious young boy, you can see his prayer shawl there, um, huddled with his mother with the Star of David arm armband, uh, representing that he had to identify himself as a Jew. Um, these labels were used to raise money by a number of different organizations. This one is the Emergency Committee to Save the Jewish People of Europe. And Arthur Schick did, designed all of these labels. They were sold in these booklets. I have on all the different ones that were produced, I have the uh, complete unexploded booklets. I have some with the sheets and stamps and different things. But if you opened the booklet, there'd be a picture of Arthur Schick, a little image, a coupon where you could get a, um, if you mailed it in, you would buy the booklet for $5, which was quite a bit of money back then. They would send you a uh, eight by 10 lithograph, a cardboard lithograph of one of the images um, and, and so on. And this is what the booklets look like uh, front and back and what a full sheet they were. Um, um, this, these were uh, on exhibit, so pardon me from banging them around. Some of them got a little crooked. Um, this is a full sheet of one where he's referencing Thomas Jefferson. Um, uh, this is also for the emergency committee. The ones on the bottom there are for the uh, um, um, American Federation of Polish Jews. And uh, for those of you who know of or heard F or know of FDR's speech called the Four Freedoms, um, and many people know, uh, what's his name? Um, I just drew a blank. Uh, um, Norman Rockwell did a famous series on the four, uh, four freedoms, his drawings. These are Arthur Schick's four freedom drawings that were done also on poster stamps. And I have those uh, lithographs as well. They're quite beautiful. He did these prior to Norman Rockwell doing his. The ones on the top were for the uh, Jewish war veterans of the United States. Uh, they shall not die. Um, that's another series we'll see, but that's what the booklet looked like. And here you can see the wise son or the Chacham, um, the Mayflower and the Exodus in 1947. The ship Exodus uh, was actually taken over by the British. Uh, uh, the only American on the ship was actually killed, caught to death in the wheelhouse uh, by the British when they were trying to go after the war, uh, running the British blockade, trying to get to what was then Palestine. 
But these are tremendous uh, items. Another cover uh, mailed with Arthur Schick's uh, label on there, the Four Sons booklet. And I only mentioned on the bottom left here, many people think that those are Arthur Schick because it was also for the American um, Federation of Polish Jews, I believe. Um, those are not Arthur Schick stamps, and uh, many people think that they are. So if you're interested in these kinds of things, it's the only reason I put those in there as an exception to the rule. Um, he did illustrations for uh, the United Palestine Appeal. You can see that's an, Im an image that was used in many, many places on a piece of stationery. Um, this is a broadside from our collection. I have hanging it actually on the wall. You can't quite see behind me. But it's a proclamation and petition to the United States right after World War II in 1945 uh, for the establishment of, of, uh, of the state of Israel. And that, again, that's the same image that was on that Thomas Jefferson sheet I showed you earlier, um, used again and again. It uh, shows up on many different things. Um, here, you see that poster stamp on the bottom on an actual postcard from dated 9 October of 1945. Um, it's a very rare um, use of, of the label, trying to find these things where they were tied to the cover. Um, if you're not into philatelic stuff, tied to a cover means you know it was placed there at the time it was sent because it's somehow tied in this case by the actual stamp postmark. You can see the wavy lines of the postcard running right through the, um, uh, the item. And then the top one, which is not a postcard, uh, but those labels you see there are definitely tied to the cover. Um, there's an airmail um, label over that. And then, of course, the airmail label, along with that one, one half cent stamp, are tied by the postmark. Um, really, really nice stuff uh, if, if, if you like Arthur Schick. Now, this is really a terrific uh, and very important piece. This is St. George slaying the Nazi dragon. And, uh, you know, St. George is the, one of the patron saints of the UK. And this is a picture of Arthur Schick drawing the, the actual drawing that was used to make the stamp and a number of other things. So what you're looking at is the actual drawing to finished image on the top and the poster stamp uh, at the bottom. And that's dated 1943, I believe. And these were done to raise money for the British American Ambulance Corps in New York. And he worked very closely, and I know somebody, I can't remember who it was right now, mentioned about his um, closeness with the Roosevelt, but especially Eleanor Roosevelt, the first lady of the United States during the war, President Roosevelt's wife. Um, she was very much involved in this organization. And this is, a, this is not a full sheet of stamps. It says specimen on here. Again, the only one of these I've seen um, this is a reproduction of a sheet of these stamps on an actual uh, uh, flyer, a little uh, pamphlet. And what you're seeing here is Arthur Schick, Eleanor Roosevelt, um, uh, with, with a full sheet of the actual stamps, not this. And you can see on the bottom there, British American Ambulance Corps. And uh, this is, uh, you could buy, the, buy these labels like that. I have several of these full sheets, and but this thing is the only one of these I've seen. Um, a little personal message there from William Ruxton, who I believe that's who it is on top there on the left. Pretty good stuff. Um, this one uh, is a piece of mail, 1941, uh, and uh, it's it's you know censored mail, really nice philatelic material. Um, but what's interesting is they the, the bought to aid Britain. Uh, uh, Arthur Schick label or ch poster stamp is actually tied on the back cover. Pretty tough to find. Um, another thing that I wanted to show, this is a, a really detailed small drawing, one of three uh, originals that came in a series I bought from a, a state sale in New York City. Um, that's a little Hasidic or religious Jewish guy that Arthur Schick did. And I don't have that blown up. It's, it's an incredible, beautiful little detailed thing uh, done during the war in 1941, but notice what, and we have it framed also so you can see the back. When I bought it, I didn't understand why it was beveled around the edges. It's actually drawn on an invitation card that was held before he drew it, obviously, uh, on June 7th of 1941 for, to raise money for the British American Ambulance Corps. It was just such a beautiful piece to tie in 
um, to the, you know, the, that, that whole stamp image, if you will. Um, this is, these are the uh, four lithographs that if you would have bought that booklet, you would receive uh, of his version of the uh, four freedoms, freedom of fear, want, religion, and of course, freedom of speech. And then on the bottom is a beautifully uh, done, that's a censored, uh, an army censor censored this particular letter. And uh, it's APO is Army Post Office 251 coming. It's not really New York, but the uh, uh, all the mail was routed through there. Um, you can see one of those uh, um, Freedom From Want uh, poster stamps on this particular cover. And of course, this has extra special meaning today because I didn't know it, but we have so many people from Rochester on here, that's where it was mailed to. So we got a little bonus on that particular piece of mail today. Um, this is a full sheet, seldom seen, uh, bought to aid patriotic veteran services for the Jewish war veterans of the United States of America. Uh, beautifully done. That's the emblem. Now, our, our organization is over 100 years old as of last year. And, uh, um, and it says, please use these poster stamps in your personal and business correspondence and packages. Uh, I bought these from a guy in Philadelphia. It was a Christian guy that was doing work for the synagogue where he lived uh, just a couple of houses away when he was a boy. And he bought these full sheets. I have never seen full sheets other than the ones. I think there's three he sold me um, of these particular uh, We Shall Not Die American Federation of Polish Jews poster stamps. And these are help keep alive innocent victims of barbarism. I mean, think about that term. I mean, that's what was going on in Europe. It was barbarism. And of course, you show the elderly Jewish man with his wife and uh, a younger man behind him, but notice the armband um, uh, re required um, uh, re a requirement uh, as part of your dress to identify yourself for all Jewish people. I believe it was uh, could have been eight years old and older. Uh, all throughout Europe at this time. And uh, the woman in, that, in, in the image there, you'll see her, and I don't know if we'll see it today, but she appears in several other Arthur Schick images. Um, here's that particular poster stamp used in 1943 coming out of Chicago for local mail. Again, you see the overrun country stamp uh, from 1943 there. This is again, a very uh, unusual usage of the uh, label, not only tied to the cover by the postmark, but by the by the address that the sender put on there, you can see it says Mr. Frank Haller. Uh, part of that is actually over that label. He got into some stamps. I wanted to show this one first. This is um, was certified uh, in 1986, but this is obviously from uh, but prior to 1951 uh, when when uh, Schick passed away. Um, he submitted this. Uh, these are beautiful illustrations. Uh, uh, and it says Israel and Hebrew at the top there. And these were um, uh, essays that were sent into the Israel Post uh, probably two or three years after the uh, 1948, uh, trying to get him for stamp designs. Uh, these were rejected. I think they're quite beautiful. Who knows why stamps are rejected or whatever. I believe that uh, top one is Hillel, famous Jewish uh, uh, sage, if you will. Um, these are the two stamps in 1950 that were accepted uh, by the Israel Post. And it says, uh, there, it's, it's called the festivals. And it says, my festival of Judah are your festivals. It's taken by the, from the book of Nahum. And uh, the illustration uh, literally says, keep thy face, O Judah. And, um, um, you know, it, they're beautifully done. I don't even see it there. Um, it, it was when they, before the shekel, they, uh, the Israel currency was a pruta, and uh, this is a five and a 15 pruta stamp uh, with the same uh, tab as you see there. I have these in full sheets signed by Arthur Schick. They're quite beautiful that I picked up on Israel on one of our many trips there. Um, I wanted to show this. This is just one where he did a, uh, uh, in 1950, where he lived in New Canaan, Connecticut, where he uh, settled in America. Uh, he actually wrote with compliments of Arthur Schick on this uh, first day cover. Uh, the first, the illustration on the right, although that looks like Arthur Schick's work, it's not. The cachet was not Arthur Schick. But then also these uh, generally fairly expensive um, plate blocks of four um, of the uh, stamps. Uh, these were really nice because this pair, this set of, of two plate blocks, uh, 
um, were actually uh, inscribed by him to someone. So they're, they're kind of prized items here, 19. Oh, here, I, sorry for this, but I can't take these out of my big binder to portfolio then. So if it looks a little wavy, but this is what a full sheet of the 15 Pruta stamp looks like signed by him. Now in 1949, the year before, he designed six stamps for the country of Liberia for their independence. And as you can see on the far right there, the uh, guy that looks like uh, in a blue outfit with the Liberian flag that looks very similar to ours, um, that's Yehudi Ashman. And he wanted to set up a, a, a colony or literally I, Liberia to be a place for uh, uh, African-Americans and others to go and have their independence in a country of their own in a very positive manner. Uh, anyway, these are unbelievable artwork on these stamps. There was a, a one, two, th three, and five cent, and two airmail stamps, a 25 and a 50. And it's really lovely. This is a first day cover. Uh, this guy, Frank Bruns, was the uh, one of the big guys at the um, Smithsonian Institute in America. And he was uh, uh, the big stamp macher, the big stamp guy, if you will. Uh, and these are postmarked in, in, in uh, Monrovia. Um, there, there are just a couple of others. Uh, I think one of them has an error on it. Uh, we're looking at here. I can't remember what the error is. It's probably a, a oh, a, um, a perforation error on this particular. So I blew up the uh, one cent stamp. And you know, for stamp collecting errors, were always uh, something fun to find. Um, these are extremely uh, unusual because this was exact postage where the stamps were used. Uh, mailed from uh, both these two were mailed mailed from Monrovia, um, and this is the correct postage for um, uh, that particular time. Uh, one sent to Manchester, England, that uh, probably isn't too far from where Alan Mann lives, and uh, the other one to Biloxi, Mississippi. Very unusual. But notice also one is from importers. A lot of these though were sent. Um, from uh, uh, Christian missions in, uh, in Liberia. And here you see on the back, there's a, uh, a postmark there of May 1st, 1950, who knows when it arrived. And the other one is a, a traveling postmark there, intermediary one from Harbel, uh, Liberia. So that's uh, uh, June of 1950 as well. And just a couple of others. I show these only because they're so unusual. Uh, the Firestone Plantation, if you're not aware, uh, Liberia is known, and you're seeing that with these stamps, known for their rubber production, the rubber trees. And you can see what the gentleman on the left, uh, top left stamp there, those uh, two centers, that's tapping the, uh, uh, the rubber trees for the rubber sap. And uh, the other one I really love, not only is it the correct postage, but it's a uh, coming from Robertsport, uh, Liberia, which is, uh, um, I'm not sure what PE stands for, maybe a Protestant or uh, evangelical mission. Very interesting stuff. And these are on the backs of those particular uh, envelopes or covers that you see there. Oh, and a lot of mail went through Sierra Leone, by the way, coming out of Liberia. And that's why I'm showing that particular cover here. Uh, this one, notice this one. This is a mind blower because this comes out of Monrovia. And uh, it's really amazing that this is, uh, I can't see the date, 1968. So somebody was still using, they used a dollar's worth of, uh, what is it, a dollar and a quarter's worth of postage here uh, for airmail cover, registered airmail coming out of Liberia to Germany in 1968. So 21 years after the stamp, or, or 19 years after the stamp was issued. Um, this was another beautiful Liberia souvenir sheet uh, for airmail, this was supposed to be an airmail stamp without a, uh, not yet uh, with a, um, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, what do you call it, the amount on the stamp, the uh, denom denomination, pardon me, and uh, it was rejected for some reason. So, but there's, there's a number of these, these aren't too hard to find, a little bit pricey maybe, but uh, they're quite beautiful. And that's again, all the uh, uh, airmail and the, uh, the beautiful border Arthur Schick was known for and so on. Um, these came out in 1951, I believe. Arthur Schick passed away in 51, but he had already worked on this. The stamps have nothing to do with Arthur Schick, but you are able to acquire these souvenir sheets, if you will, full page ones to place the stamps are on. And the entire background that you see there is artwork by Arthur Schick. It says, the love of liberty brought us here. 
And, um, and that's all to do with the, it's called the Yehudi Ashman series. And uh, these were done, I have full color proofs of all the different pages and all the different colors, just exquisite stuff. Uh, the artwork's beautiful. For those of you who may be involved in philatelic types, types material, um, Kashmir Bolesky, and again, this is going right up to our friends in Canada, was the primary most prominent Canadian stamp dealer out of Winnipeg. And he was a Polish guy and uh, um, just was unbelievably good friends with Arthur Schick, both Polish patriots. And um, this is Arthur Schick's design stationery for Kashmir Bolesky. Bolesky. And uh, Kashmir was known just an unbelievable marketer of stamps, not just Schick stamps. So when you see all of this Schick material, and there's mounds of it out there, the Liberian signed full sheets and first day covers and everything, there's just thousands of items still out there. This is what Bolesky would have Schick just sign this stuff in droves. And he, you know, back then everything was done by mail. Um, they would, you would have subscriptions, they would send you stamps and envelopes and different things. And Bolesky was responsible for, I really think, Schick's philatelic. Uh, success, uh, I think, without question. And here's something interesting. Here's Arthur Schick sitting there with Bolesky. And these were, he didn't finish the series. He died while these were going on. Uh, I think he did nine countries and this airmail um, uh, design here. The airmail one is usual, is done in 1977 on an actual cover. That's a reproduction. I thought it was kind of cool. But these are the original ones, and I've got the entire series that was completed. They were designed as frontispieces for stamp albums. So you had Israel, Switzerland, uh, you, you know, all the England, United States, and so on. And he actually did, he was so in love with America, he did two for America. One was an actual regular size frontispiece. The other one was huge. And I have the huge one in its original mailing box sent to somebody in Pennsylvania. And it was sent by Bolesky uh, in Winnipeg. Um, it's, it's beautiful stuff. And that's what he was doing. That's just a representation. Kind of winding down here. Um, this is Arthur Schick original stationery. And as you can see from the envelope and the letterhead. Now notice the date. He died, I think, in, uh, gee, I forgot the date, just a few months after this. And I'd have to look at my first slide again. So forgive me for that. Some, too many numbers to remember. Um, this guy that the letters date is um, addressed to, uh, Kroskop, is a uh, was a huge Arthur Schick collector, and there was actually I have in my collection a uh, uh, an auction catalog auctioning off a lot of his stuff. But so here it is. Uh, it says in my letter to you, dated eight May, March, I have promised you a price list of the original paintings of Mr. Arthur Schick available for sale. Uh, here's a list of the items, and that's what was in this um, particular letter uh, sent sent to this guy, Krauskopf. And it's signed, you'll notice, by George Schick, and he died very young, too. Uh, he died of cancer. I think that uh, Arthur was 58. This guy, I think, was also in his 50s. His son died very young. But Sch Arthur Schick himself was very ill at this time, and so George is sending out the mail on his behalf. And you can see the dates on these. And this is a nice little piece of uh, the Art of Arthur Schick letterhead, um, you know, a beautiful corner cover dated 1953, uh, along with New Canaan Art Publishing Company, uh, again, to this guy, Krauskopf. Uh, very interesting stuff and, and hard to find. This one I really wanted to show you because this is, um, yeah, it was September. And I think he died. I think it was September 11th, the following day. Um, this is George Schick, again, on Arthur Schick stationery uh, the day before he died, wanting to inform him about Children's Digest magazine. Um, the October cover was an image that Arthur Schick did. And uh, this is the cover of the magazine that was uh, just virtually came out right around the time of uh, Arthur Schick's uh, uh, passing. And that's and I have this, but it's really hard to find. Um, it's, it's a Reader's Digest, if you're familiar with that, or an American Mercury, you know, a digest size magazine, pocket edition, if you will. Uh, it's a beautiful illustration, much like stuff from the Arabian Nights and those things. 
Um, these are some uh, general covers that I found in various places. Uh, this is Frances Perkins, you see on the right hand side. She was the first woman uh, official in the United States, in the cabinet of a president of the United States, cabinet office holder. And that was a full page, I can't remember if it was Life or Look magazine, very large format magazines, Chick's illustration of her. These are some of those frontispieces pieces that you see for the state of Israel and Switzerland. Um, somebody reproduced them, I'm sure, without uh, authorization. Uh, on that's a 37 cent Hanukkah stamp from 2002. The same design stamp as was the very first one in 1996 was a 32 cent stamp. And of course, one of the George Washington illustrations we saw earlier. And this is uh, John uh, of Colno, uh, the guy that, uh, um, you know, famous Polish, uh, another hero. I, I think that's something to do with uh, uh, finding uh, the United States before Columbus, if my memory serves me. But it's kind of cool because not only is an Arthur Schick, Schick illustration and a very uncommon one, but uh, it's not Schick's uh, uh, post, uh, cachet postmark, but it's still kind of cool. Um, this is Arthur Schick on Sky and Telescope magazine. That is Copernicus. And this is the frontispiece of a 1940s book put out by a guy named Mirswa. And um, it's, it, this is reused on a modern cover of uh, a more modern cover of 1943 of, uh, of his illustration of Copernicus. And what I meant to say about modern, I'm sorry, was the stamps from Guinea that were unauthorized use of the Copernicus um, uh, illustration on a satellite stamp, you know, astrology and that sort of thing. And I've got a pretty good uh, number of these, both perforated and uh, not perforated, these uh, sheets with the uh, four images of the Copernicus stamp on there. I found this, um, I think there were a couple of them floating around, 2007 for the total eclipse of the sun, U.S. stamp, first day of issue, somebody reused the uh, Copernicus, uh, Schick's Copernicus illustration, probably having no idea it was done by Arthur Schick. This is uh, uh, Kashmir Belasque. Pulaski, and uh, you know he's really one of the most famous. There's so many cities in America named after him, and so on. And I thought you would enjoy these. Um, this is these are real 1939. Uh, the you know the Polish um, um, uh, hero stamps, if you will. And the one on the left is just one of my favorites. So there's Pulaski and uh, George Washington. But notice there's that two cent Pulaski stamp postmarked in Pulaski, New York, which is not too awful far from Utica, where I grew up. So I thought that one was just, you know, that, that, that's, that's incredible. That's, that's a trifecta, if you will, right? The stamp, the postmark, and, and the shit card. Um, and the other one is just, you know, making reference to the card we saw before. And again, the Pulaski one on that, uh, uh, the 1976 version. So here, uh, there's the two cent Pulaski stamp from 1931. Um, that's a more unusual Arthur Schick image of Pulaski that we don't see as often, but you can see the po out of Buffalo, New York, not too far from Rochester. And there we show a Chicago postmark from 1931 uh, of the Pulaski stamp with Arthur Schick's other uh, Pulaski. Uh, he really loved that guy, as you could tell. And that's nice also because that's out of the Freemasons uh, Army Lodge. Um, uh, and you can see the Freemason, the Masons. Um, uh, uh, logo right there below it. Now, these are interesting. I didn't mention these earlier when you saw the big uh, uh, sheet of uh, poster stamps, but this is a poster stamp he did in 1948, 1949, I guess, for uh, the very first Israel bond. And I have a beautiful lithograph of this, which is uh, seldom seen uh, hanging downstairs as well. But the reason I like this was somebody used that same image of more of the original artwork like we have in the house of, of the lithograph we have on this particular cover for Israel's 50th anniversary. And uh, it's, it's nice. It just, again, you keep seeing Arthur Schick's work um, so many years after his passing. Um, here, Mogan David Adam is the Israeli Red Cross, uh, if you will. And there's an Arthur Schick. You see the wounded shoulder with the nurse, with the red uh, Mogan David is the Star of David, if you will. And uh, it, Ad Adom is uh, red in Hebrew. So that's uh, there's the red Mogan David, if you will. 
And here we have most of these, but not all. This is a series of the magazine covers that Arthur Schick did. You can see in the bottom right, the Children's Digest. We saw the Answer Magazine. Um, there's an Answer Magazine. I, I'm not sure if I have that one or not with the Joseph Trumpledore, but so many of these are in the collection. I know that I, uh, I don't have some of these, but the Schick covers, the uh, Collier's covers, where you see the one the, with the bat, uh, the Japanese guy is a bat flying over Pearl Harbor. Uh, it's pretty impressive stuff. I mean, it's you got to imagine. The, the, um, and this one is uh, the Jewish war veterans. There's a modern cover that I think showed up here as, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, less than 10 years ago. So uh, this I wanted to show you for a couple of reasons. One, that's the cover of Collier's. And it's showing December 7th of 1941. It's an anniversary issue. This was Collier's that was released 12 December of 1942, one year later. What's really interesting, I found this, the uh, uh, American bat stamps, there were four stamps issued right here in Austin, Texas in 2002. I found this cover where somebody, again, um, no idea who Arthur Schick is or who illustrated the cover, used that Collier's cover on a bat stamp uh, issued right here. So I was glad to get that. Here's another Collier's cover with a um, uh, 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 overrun country's Polish flag on it out of Chicago which if, you, if you're not aware, has a very large, uh, much like Utica, New York and other cities, uh, uh, very large Polish populations. Uh, that's a, a, a beautiful uh, rendition, a, a cachet from the Collier's cover you see on the bottom left there. And this one is a postcard that came out of Poland. And this is fairly new, but it does mention Arthur Schick. It says Samson in the ghetto. That's the Warsaw ghetto uprising, if you will. If not, it, it, this is issued... Uh, from a gallery, I guess, in 1945, but it's brand new postcard. It's probably just a few years old. And that A rate, uh, that's a pre-printed Polish image on there. That's a, a standard postcard rate in Poland uh, when this was issued. And I, I, I don't recall, I'm sorry, I probably have it in my notes somewhere, but I don't recall what, but it's really recent. Um, these are some things I wanna show you. This is an original drawing from our collection. And uh, in 1941, Arthur Schick came out with this book called The New Order. And it's a compilation of many of his anti-Nazi, anti-access uh, uh, political cartoons, if you will. And the two that you see side by side, we own those two originals. And one is here, you see in color. And this is the other one that says, can't you see I'm busy? And that's a British guy fighting off um, Italy, but at the same time, um, you know, trying to to um, knock off the Nazis there. And those are both. And then this is a really interesting one. This is a one of a kind knockoff here. Um, this is a, must be a printer's proof. It's an uncut, it, the, everything is on both sides of this huge sheet. It's enormous. And it's an uncut version uh, of the book. So I can only imagine it was done for proofing. Um, you can see some of the images may be a little off center or whatever. Um, these are two posters in our collection um, that he did for um, Wyeth Pharmaceuticals, which is now part of Pfizer. Um, to you know, VD was a uh, a huge issue with you know millions of men in service overseas here in the states, uh, and uh, these are anti-Nazi illustrations. Really, good. the one on the top left is you know showing sores all over the uh, Hitler, Mussolini, and to and uh, Hirohito, the emperor. Um, these are pretty good. American soldiers can catch it with ease and uh, shows you about the very different venereal diseases. So these were designed to be put in um, uh, the workplace, uh, army barracks and what have you. Um, I, I think there's a couple of these that may exist. I've never seen another one. This is a thick cardboard uh, store um, poster, but it's on hard cardboard. It's been a little bit repaired up in the top left corner uh, for bromo seltzer. And bromo seltzer was like Alka Seltzer, you know, for heartburn and so on, fizzy tablets. And it says for quick relief from those headaches. So it's a pretty good illustration there of uh, Hitler and uh, and um, and, and Tojo with their hats being blown off by war bonds. Uh, gin rummy, this is on the back, an ad for Lumberman's uh, Mutual Insurance Company, even on the back of a gin rummy score pad that somebody would do. And you can see, um, you know, for service to the access camarade. Uh, really good stuff. I love this one for forming French, friendships in Palestine. 
uh, uh, primarily British and American soldiers. I'm not sure really that there were very many American soldiers there. It was really British, but talking to uh, people settling there, you can see a kibbutz or a work farm, if you will, in the very center and up on the very top of the hill in the back there, it's very, uh, very quietly done. There's a Star of David, that's a synagogue on top of the hill in the background there. Beautiful Arthur Schick advertisement uh, for the Coca-Cola company. Asbestos was in, asbestos was very short supply during World War II and the United States controlled the vast majority of it. So the asbestos uh, um, kind of foundation or organization uh, manufacturers Association all got together and these were very these are expensive ads to find taller ads they ran anti-nazi things like yeah good luck trying to get the asbestos from America and you know asbestos was really uh, really vital in the war effort uh, used and tragically it caused cancer nobody knew at that time but it was a fire retardant used in ships and uh, everything to uh, protect American lives um, this is an ad that I have hanging right here framed. It says three reasons why these three can't win. And it was for North American Aviation, which became North American Rockwell and today is Rockwell Aviation. Um, and these are various things where one particular ad he did, and uh, of course, North American owned the artwork for this. Um, Hoagy Carmichael put out a song called The Clanky Old Yank and The Clanky Old Tank. There they peeled off the other two guys and just used uh, 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 Tojo on the thing there. Uh, Scoos, please. Bad song. Don't buy. So, you know, this stuff is so racist. It's unbelievable. But listen, after Pearl Harbor, the world was what it was. Somebody else created a pin. These are called Japanese hunting licenses. We have some other ones on exhibit, including this one at the U.S. Holocaust Museum right now. And there are Americans in the Holocaust exhibit. Uh, keep them dying, no limit. So they used, uh, you know, authorized because North America owned the artwork uh, on a pin. And then the War Department came out with a pamphlet. So after May 8th of 1945, Victory in Europe Day, you know, we're still having to go after the Japanese until virtually, the, I guess uh, it was uh, September 1st or so, 11th um, in 1945, when the Japanese finally surrendered. Um, Two down and one to go, a War Department pamphlet using that same illustration. And then a friend of mine in Japan knew that I collected a former business acquaintance of mine, knew that I collected Arthur Schick. This shows up uh, in the mail one day. Uh, it wasn't even available in the United States, uh, a book in, in Japanese uh, using that same illustration. So it, it's really remarkable. I want to spend a minute on this. This is one of the largest Arthur Schick drawings that we have. Uh, it's the original. It showed up in this American Mercury uh, Digest magazine. It's Hitler, Hirohito, Mussolini, and Francisco Franco. And they're all dressed in Latin American garb, if you will, trying to take the Panama Canal. And if you're not aware of it, it was really, it's a vital waterway, right? Connecting the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. And uh, it was a real big thing for the um, Axis powers to try to gain um, control of that. So this is Arthur Schick's rendition of that. And there's two things I wanna point out. Much like you saw Mussolini being pulled uh, by a chain by uh, Hermann Goering in that earlier piece we saw, what you can see here, I hope, is one of the two reins of the horse of Hitler's is being taken by um, uh, Franco, the, uh, the, the fascist dictator of Spain. Uh, of course, everybody's got swastikas all over them, but the other noose, it, pardon me, the other rein is a noose around Franco's neck. And Franco is carrying a book. And I know you can't see it on this uh, reduced illustration. It says Sein Kampf. So Hitler in the 1920s wrote Mein Kampf, My Battle or My Struggle, which really outlines the entire domination of the world and the destruction of the Jewish people. And Franco is carrying, Mein Kampf means my struggle or battle, and he's carrying Sein Kampf, your battle or struggle in German. So it's really a very chilling piece uh, of all the excess powers, if you will. This appears, uh, this is the original hanging here in the house along with that original uh, little clipping he put from the New York Times that's Schick's writing on it. Uh, this is a painting called The Scarecrows, and what it depicts are 
older German men in Teutonic and Napoleonic type uniforms. At the end of the war, they're recruiting um, uh, or inscripting uh, older men and boys into the German army as defeat is, you know, on the horizon. And it's kind of a joke making this look like they're raping museums and, uh, and, and, and the elderly to, uh, to go fight uh, uh, against the allies. And the book is called Ink and Blood. There were a thousand of them produced. I think we have one left. We've, uh, we've, I've acquired several. One is with the uh, Dallas Holocaust Museum and the other is with the Houston Holocaust Museum. We gifted those to them. This is a wonderful one. I like this. If you like British type humor, this is Hermann Goering, the head of the German Air Force or the Luftwaffe. Um, that's a Royal Air Force. It's hard to see here, but it's got the Royal Air Force uh, crest on the little airplane standing up. As you know, the Battle of Britain, the uh, Royal Air Force uh, staved off the uh, Luftwaffe and an invasion by the Nazis. So it's a great original. Matter of fact, that's hanging right on the wall to my right here. Um, this one is another good one. This is Arthur Schick's. Uh, Norway throwing out shit. They really weren't pro-Nazi uh, until the um, uh, until the Soviets invaded them. So I, I I don't know. I guess they wanted to be more towards Germany. But I have this original wire photo of Arthur Schick painting the original drawing that we have. And I don't know if you can see, but that's a very thick uh, board he's drawing on. And this is almost wood. Um, this original drawing that's uh, in our collection. It's a real beauty. This one I love, and I'm really glad I put this in here because this one was done while he was in Canada in 1940. Um, and it's Arthur Schick. You can see it says Ottawa, and it says just a minute. And that's one of the Canadian Mounted Police uh, taking a uh, Nazi and giving him the old one-two. Notice, again, I'll mention this, the boots and the, and the hands. A very unique um, uh, character, characteristic, characteristic of Arthur Schick's drawings. Um, I, if you can see behind me, I'm not sure what you're able to see from my Zoom camera, but we have a colotype print of the Declaration of Independence of the United States done by Arthur Schick. That's a photograph of him, of him with the finished original, and that hangs in the Library of Congress of the United States. Um, that's Arthur Schick with a number of uh, different drawings. Uh, on the top there is uh, the Declaration of Independence of the United States. Below it, is the Declaration of Independence of the State of Israel and some other original drawings on exhibit somewhere. But this one is a colotype print. There's very few of those really high quality print and it's actually larger than what that frame is, but it was just too big. Uh, I had to uh, crop it a little bit. Uh, just beautiful artwork, all hand calligraphy and, and so on. Uh, just again, a real American patriot, always showing American Revolution for freedom, and, uh, and of course, a big fan of George Washington. So with that, I was going to end, but I wanted to make one comment that the, um, the draw they are not postcards, but those drawings of the, um, uh, of the American thing where I showed uh, Prince Estabrook, those were bought by the president of Poland and given to FDR during his presidency and actually hung in the Hyde Park Museum in New York. So the connection to FDR and Arthur Schick is very, very significant, including, of course, Eleanor Roosevelt. Be happy. I'm, I have no idea if I went way over my time, but I'm just delighted to be able to uh, uh, present this to you, and hopefully you enjoyed it and learned something. Wow. <laughs> oh, my right. gosh. Thank you, Greg. That was fabulous. Oh, good. I, good we good. just couldn't have found anybody that could have uh, told us more about uh, Arthur Schick and postcards and prints and magazine covers <laughs> and stamps. A big, big part of that's philately, for sure. Uh, Ashley, do we have any uh, comments or questions from the chat room? We do, we have a, a couple. Um, early on when in your presentation, Greg, you were um, trying to think about who Ernest Bevin, what, what administration he was under, he was the fourth, Foreign Secretary was his role in that Atlee government. Wait, so, uh, say it again. The what secretary? Foreign. Foreign, oh, foreign Secretary. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Alan. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Alan, for that. And then you answered a question that we had from Shaw Levine um, midway through about your email address. But um, Alan put it in the post, but then we also saw it on your last slide. So thank you for that. 
Oh, yeah. Wonder, it, uh, if you need anything else, I can put the slide back up. Or, um, But also, if anybody's interested for the other postcard clubs, I mean, I we talk, I have so many different presentations. I, I, I told uh, Alan and Hal um, and Ashley as well that it's, you know, not all of them are, I, I don't just collect postcards, but if you'd like, we, we never charge anything for the use of our materials when we exhibit internationally. Um, and, and I never take a speaking fee. So if there's something you'd like or uh, somebody doesn't show for a presentation, I filled in for a lot of people over the years. So um, um, That's just, quite just, an offer. yeah, just let me know. I'm, I'm happy to help anyone. That's wonderful. Um, there is a question from Sterling Dean Kincaid about um, was Schick's work commissioned or licensed? Um, well, it depended, I think. I, I, I think that, um, you know, actually, that's a really good question. I don't know of work that was licensed. He did commissioned work. So when people wanted, I mean, he did ads for so many people, much like Dr. Seuss, for example, during the war. Um, he did ads for so many people. That was work for hire. You made the print. Uh, you made the original. You sent it off. Um, and all these political cartoons he did by the hundreds uh, that ran in, uh, you know, newspapers and magazines all over, um, those were sold. I mean, people paid him to do that. So when they had that, when the most of the uh, original artwork that we have, the political cartoons, um, they usually come out of an archive from a newspaper or a magazine. You know, somebody buys them and, uh, and then decides to auction them off publicly. So um, I would have to say, my, and I don't, I can't say this, I don't want to sound too authoritative on this, um, I don't know of anything that he licensed. Okay. I haven't seen that. What he did work for hire, and I'm sure a lot of the work he did for many of these organizations was pro bono, like the American Federation of Polish Jews or the Emergency Committee to right. save the Jewish people of Europe. I, I, I'm pretty certain of that. We've had some other comments and questions come in. Um, Robert Bell says, wonderful presentation, thank you, but ask, have you published any material that's available for sale? Maybe not based on what you just said, or maybe so. Well, you know, I publish a lot of material. I write quite often for the uh, Israel Philatelist magazine. It's a U.S.-based group here of, uh, uh, it's an international group. Um, I, I did have, I published a really nice article there about Arthur Schick and uh, some other things. I mean, if somebody's interested, I'd be happy to send you a PDF file of it. Um, we don't, my wife and I, we don't accept honorariums. I don't, um, we, we do this on our dime. And, and a lot of it has to do candidly because a lot of the things that we do really do touch on the, on the Holocaust. And, you know, I, I, I know people are professors and there's, we, we can't bring ourselves to ever do anything but try to educate people about the evil of what went down and still exists in the world today. To make even a penny off of that would be so <laughs> inconceivable to my wife and I that it, it's just not part of our makeup. Greg, I, Greg, I was wondering, um, do you remember how much you paid for the piece from Nodler Gallery? Uh, I'm sorry, from wh which uh, which piece? The, the the little painting, the um, the illustration from the Nodler Gallery in New York. I wonder if you remember what you paid for it. Geez, I don't, I'm not even sure which. Uh, oh, oh, from the one I, from the three I bought um, uh, from an estate sale in New York. Is that the little the little uh, Jewish guy with the yeah um, yeah, yeah that one the, the one with the card on the back. Yeah, what did that oh, set you back? Gosh, I, I honestly I don't know. I bought all three of them at the same time. They 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 were in a um uh, the estate guy said. Matter of fact, I have them hung. I, you probably can't see them from here, but right outside the. Uh, towards my, uh, the steps going downstairs. Um, uh, I have, I had to get them reframed because uh, acid was really starting to affect them, but they're hung the same way the estate guy pulled them off the wall. It was a 104 year old uh, uh, Jewish German woman passed away. And I suspect her husband probably kind of knew Arthur Schick and bought, or of him and bought those. I sadly, uh, Michael, I, I think that was Michael that asked me that. Um, I, I yes. just don't remember. I, I keep terrible records, um, probably so my wife doesn't know what I pay um, for some of these artworks. But I guarantee all this stuff is in the thousands. I mean, it's, you know, none of this stuff is coming cheap. Thank you.
yeah, sorry, I, I just truly have no recollection of what I paid for that piece. Great, we have one more question uh, from Andrew Cunningham in Toronto, who says, you mentioned that Hitler regarded Schick as a danger to Germany. How would he have come to Hitler's attention to cause him to have that sort of reaction? Oh, I guess, yeah. I guess what I'm asking is what was the main source of Schick's early fame? Yeah, so his early fame is that he was one of the first and just unbelievable anti-Hitler cartoonists of the day. Now, their propaganda departments knew what we were doing, the same as we would see their propaganda. So all of a sudden, Hitler is being displayed as this demonic figure everywhere across America. In, in, in uh, England, the other countries were pretty well overrun by then. Uh, but yeah, they, they, they knew full well who was producing that artwork. And I've not seen a document that states this, but it is said in most circles that really study Arthur Schick that there was a $50,000 price on his head. I, I wonder. Um, yeah, and I'm sure it wasn't just Arthur Schick, but again, he was one of the early anti-Nazi, um, uh, you, know, you know, really telling it like it was. Um, so that that would be my guess. I don't think there was, uh, you know, a, a letter that Hitler put out. I mean, you can't find a Holocaust document with his name on it, right? That was pretty savvy. So, you know, connecting him to the mass murder. So, right. Okay. Thank you, Hal. That's all the questions we have. Okay. Well, thank you, Ashley, and thank you again, Greg. I love your enthusiasm. You mm -hmm. know, uh, I think several of us, or a lot of us, you know, really get into our hobbies and and uh that's fun to see and it's uh it's catching it's <laughs> thank you it's, uh, it's just wonderful to and we hope to have you again sometime about some other aspect and golly golly thank you so much for sharing well hell i have to tell you in all candor your enthusiasm is really makes me feel good and wanting to do stuff with you between you and Alan and now Ashley um it really <laughs> truly makes me feel good because you know you guys are really interested in what we all do and I think we all have everybody's best interest at heart so it, it's it's truly my pleasure well thank you your uh, program will certainly be repeated and just savored all that just thank you so okay. much <laughs> thank you thank you I appreciate it